Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create and add a layer mask to your photos to make a transparent background in Photoshop. And then I'm going to show you how you can save the photo to keep that background transparent. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Now in this tutorial guys I'm going to show you how you can create and add a layer mask to make the background transparent in Photoshop and then I'm going to show you how you can save the file so you can keep that background transparent. Now this is going to be a beginner tutorial just on learning how to use the layer mask and the brush tool and just a few basic tools in Photoshop to create a transparent background. But if you do want to have more advanced tutorials on learning how to create detailed cutouts or smooth cutouts then go ahead to the link in the description and I've got a few videos there already on those topics. So if you want to have a look at any of the pre-selected photos that I found work really well with this effect so you can follow along with the same photo that I'm going to be using, go ahead to the link in the description and you can download it from there. But without further ado guys, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now guys, if you do want to use the same photo that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, go ahead to the link in the description and there'll be a link where you can download it from there. Right, so this is gonna be a photo that I'm gonna work on and I got it from Unsplash. So once you've uh, chosen the photo, go ahead and load Photoshop. And once it's loaded, what you want to do is find out what area that you would like to turn transparent. So today, what I'm going to be doing is cutting out this girl and having the background completely transparent and then I'm going to save the file to keep the background transparent. So, what we firstly want to do is we want to go down to the bottom right hand corner and you'll see a square with a circle in it. This is your layer mask. So it will say add a mask if you hover over the icon. All you need to do is click. Once you click on it, as you will see in the corner at the top here, it will come up with where our layers are. Now we've got our photo here, but then next to it, you've got this white square or white thumbnail appear. This is your layer mask. So what we can do is we can actually paint onto this layer mask, adding or removing the photo. So if we go ahead to our brush tool, which is B on your keyboard, or you can go ahead to the left hand side tool panel and you can find where it says brush tool. What you can do is you can paint onto the layer mask, creating a transparent layer. So if we have a look at our bottom here, we've got our foreground and background layer. If you click on this tiny little uh, kind of arrow icon, you can flick between the two. So what we're going to do is work out how to paint it on. So we've got black here, which is 100% transparent. And then if we click on that arrow icon, we've got white, which is 100% opaque, which is completely non-transparent. So if we go into that layer mask and we use black because the layer mask is completely white at the moment so we can see the whole of the photo. If we paint completely black on the layer mask, so we'll just paint the line here, as you can see, it goes transparent. But what the difference is between using a layer mask and the eraser tool is if you make a mistake in a layer mask, you can actually revert it by, if you go back to this arrow tool and select white again, you can re replace the section that you have removed. So once you've understood that black removes, white adds, then you can start using a different types of techniques to remove the background. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use the quick selection tool to remove the background. So what we're gonna do is go up to this little icon here, which is called the quick selection tool, or you can use W on your keyboard. And what we're going to do is just going to select the girl. So we're going to click and drag like you would do with the brush tool. And what the computer will do is work out where the edges are. So as you can see, it's working out where the girl's hair is and where the girl's shoulders are. And as you do is head round and until you are happy, you can keep on painting until you're completely happy with where the selection is. So I'm really happy with this. So once you're happy with the selection, what we can do is go up to select and mask. 
Now once we've clicked this, as you can see, it creates a mask here, but it's just a temporary mask until you go to output settings. So once you've uh, created this selection here, what we can do is we can start to refine the edge. Because as you can see, around the hair, it hasn't done a great job. So what we can do is go up to the top left hand corner and you can find where it says refine edge brush tool or it's R on your keyboard. And all you'll need to do is just zoom in to the edge of the photo. So we can start off this edge and you'll just need to repaint where the edge is and Photoshop will again look at that edge and refine it for us to create a better output. So as you can see, we're going around the edge here and you can see as it's going along, the red selection area is changing depending on where the edge of the photo is and it's refining the edge for us automatically which is brilliant and time saving. So as we do we head round making sure that you are happy with where the edge is. Again guys if you want to refine the edge again you can always go over that area. You can go over it as many times as you like until you are completely happy with the result. But in the new Photoshop 2020, this particular technique is getting a lot better. So once you're happy with the result, all you just need to do is check all the way around the edge. I'm really happy with this. So now we need to go to the output settings. So if we go to the rotten bottom right hand corner here, you can see where it says output two. Now at the moment, we've just got it on selection. So if we press OK, what it will do is it will just take it back to a selection. But today, what we want is to create a layer mask. So what we could do is click on where it says selection and as you can see the second one to the top or the one just below selection is called layer mask and what it will do is it will create a layer mask of that red area and it will turn that transparent. So what we can do is go ahead so once you're happy with uh, that layer mask there what we can do is press OK and as you can see it has created a completely transparent background where the hair girl and the hair is. But as you can see a little bit has gone a bit too transparent around the edges. So this is where, again guys, you can use the brush tool. So again, that's B on your keyboard, or go ahead to the left-hand side tools palette, and you can start painting in the areas that you want to add slash remove. So white adds and black removes. So remember that, guys. So as we go along, along here, as you can see, we're adding to the selection, as you can see. But as you can see, I've made a small mistake there. So all we need to do is go ahead selecting black as our foreground layer, and then we can remove it like so. And then if you just want to go through the entire um, photo until you are completely happy with the results. Lovely, so once you're happy, we can actually look at the layer mask on the, on the actual image. So what you want to do is hold down Alt and you can go ahead and click on that thumbnail. As you can see, white adds and black removes. So you can see where and where not the photo is transparent. So anywhere that's black is transparent and anywhere that's white is opaque or not transparent. So all we need to do to get out of this particular um, look is you can just click back onto the photo and as you can see the photo is appear. But what we need to do now is save it to keep its transparency because if you save it as a JPEG, what it will do is it will just turn the background to white, which is not what we're after. So what we need to do is hold down uh, Alt, Shit, Alt, Command and S, or you can go to File, Save As. It will come up with this dialog box where we learn where to save it. So I'm just going to save it onto the computer. And what we need to do now is if you go down to where it says Format, we can either save it as a Photoshop file which is quite a large way of saving it, but it will automatically open up in Photoshop again. Or what you want to do is go ahead and save it as a PNG. So if we save it as a PNG and we'll just save it as a copy, what we want to do is press save, but it will open up this extra dialog box just before you save it. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have large file where this will allow it to keep its transparency. If you choose medium or small, you might find out that it either has a white or a black background. So make sure we choose large file size or fastest saving. And all you need to do is press OK. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can create and add a layer mask in Photoshop to create a transparent background in your photos. Brilliant. 
And there we go, guys. So that is how you can use a layer mask to make a transparent background in Photoshop. And also how you can save it as a PNG or Photoshop file to keep that background transparent. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future content. But until next time, guys, keep creating.